Everybody's got that neighborhood restaurant or bistro where they have their authentic food and they get it maybe once every other month or so and they go and they explore it. And it's really good, wholesome, down-home cooking and it's not the fast food franchise type stuff. Uh, everybody's got that restaurant in the neighborhood and you know what I'm talking about. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna show you how to do Greek, Greek cuisine, authentic Greek cuisine. Uh, and it's gonna help save you a little bit of money too because when I show you how to do this, it's a nice winter dish. When I show you how to do this, you can try this at home and it's gonna come out just like you'd get it from that authentic restaurant. So stay with us as we make Greek lamb and rice. I give you the Spartan dinner. We're doing lamb and rice. We're gonna start with the lamb, then we're gonna cook some rice. I'm gonna do a cucumber and Greek yogurt salad. And then we're gonna do a nice tossed garden salad with a homemade Greek vinaigrette. And then we'll finish it off with some, uh, some convenience butts, spanakopita. And you could also extend that out and get some dessert too, bring in some baklava or make some baklava. Maybe I'll do a quick riff on that one time. And uh, we'll do baklava as dessert, as, or, or you, could, uh, you could do other stuff too. You could do a nice ice cream or sorbet or something. Uh, but let's get right into the lamb. Uh, what I have here is I have a lamb shank, which is the front the front leg of a lamb. It's the it's right they cut it right at the shoulder, and it goes down almost to the first knuckle. And uh, and really it's it's a bone in. You want it you want the bone in because this is going to be braised, kind of like we did the uh, the short ribs. We're gonna do, you're going to see a lot of technique that's very similar to the short rib episode. What we're going to do is we just want to flour it and we're going to sear it. Then we're going to deglaze it with the wine. And then we're gonna add some stock and some tomato product to it. We're gonna just let it cook nice and slow. So this is another one of those winter dishes that you let cook slow and low, and that's it. And then, uh, you know, come springtime, we'll start to change up the menu a little bit, but what we wanna do is we wanna give you those wholesome, authentic, comfort food winter items uh, this time of year. So, so we'll take that lamb, and what I've, what I've got here is I've got, I've got about a cup of all-purpose flour, and I'm just gonna take some of my spice here, and probably about maybe a teaspoon and a half, two teaspoons of Salt, pepper, and garlic, or what I've got here is the edge. So we'll just mix that in. And meanwhile, I'm gonna get my pan fired up on the burner over here, because we wanna sear that lamb. We're gonna give it a nice sear. So I take the shank, and it's called the shank, and you should be able to find this cut of meat for probably about four bucks a pound. And this piece right here will be enough to feed about two people, maybe three. Uh, so what you wanna do is you wanna keep that into consideration when you're doing your menu planning. You might have to pick up a couple if you have a big family. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of fat in the bottom of this, so I'll get some extra virgin olive oil. Just on the bottom, that's just to help so it doesn't stick too, too much with all that flour we're putting on there. So we'll go ahead and flour this up real nice and get in all the nooks and crannies. Give it a good dredge. And the same thing that we did with the uh, short ribs, which uh, you, you can see that in a, in a prior episode, is we're just going to try to sear all sides. And the reason why I put it in this pan here is this pan is safe for the oven because we're going to go in the oven with it afterward. And it's nice and deep so and it's not too wide so we don't have to add too too much stock to it for it to uh, for it to cover the meat. Because really when you braise, you want to come right up the side of the meat and cover it almost all the way. So we'll let this braise for just a minute. I'm just trying to sear up all the sides and I keep turning it. Just trying to get a good sear mark on it, that's all. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna have to seal in those juices too. And that flour not only acts as a nice browning agent for the meat, but it'll also help in the thickening sauce, uh, the, the process of making the sauce at the end. So, and that looks pretty good right there. We got a pretty good amount on there. Now we wanna deglaze the pan, and I've got, let's see, I've got about a quarter cup of house red wine. That's a cup off the I'm going to deglaze that down. And while that's cooking down, what that's doing is it's pulling up all the brown bits off the bottom of that pan. I'm going to go ahead and I've got chicken stock here. Now I want to talk a little bit about the stocks with the, um, with the lamb. You can use whatever stock you like. You can use beef or chicken uh, because it's lamb. And if you're lucky enough to find a lamb stock, that's even better. But you can use 
um, either chicken or beef. I prefer chicken, and the reason why I prefer chicken is because beef has a very, very strong, dominant flavor profile, and you won't get the lamb come through as much. If the chicken's a little bit more subtle, you'll get more of that lamb flavor. And then I've got a half a can of San Marzano Roma tomatoes. And my superstition, I put a tomato on each side, and then I pour the rest of that sauce. And you can go ahead and break that tomato up right there with your tongs. And then I'm just gonna put the rest of the sauce right in there with it. And then, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add a little bit of an essence of cinnamon. And a pinch of fresh oregano, which I've got diced up for our vinaigrette that we're gonna make in a few minutes. And I'll, what the, all that's gonna do is it's gonna give that stock an essence. You don't really need a whole lot to go too crazy with it. Because you just want it to kind of give bring out a little bit. And I'm not gonna add any salt or anything until the very end because we're gonna let this cook up and it's gonna start to shred right off the bone. And when that happens, um, that's when you wanna add your salt because that means it's almost done at that point. So let's bring this up to a boil. Okay, so we got a nice rolling boil now. We're gonna go ahead, shut it down. And we are going to cover it with foil. And we're just gonna pop it right into the oven. And like I said, we we'll probably wanna set the oven, preheat the oven to 350 to 400. Um, I would start it at 400 and maybe drop it down to 350 after about 20 minutes. And what we're gonna do then is we're just gonna let it cook. Um, for a good hour anyway, and then we'll check it with a pair of tongs, almost like pulled pork, to see if it'll shred. And, uh, and when it starts to shred, that's when you know it's done. And again, that flour is also gonna help with thickening that sauce, so it's gonna turn into kind of a, like a very loose gravy by the time it's all done. So we'll take this pan, we'll pop this right in the oven. So switching gears into the rice, uh, we've got two cups of converted white rice. Uh, you can use whatever kind of rice you like. If you like basmati rice, if you like, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of different kinds. Uh, I would say stick with a, stick with a basic white. Uh, the converted seems to cook the most even and most consistent, but you've got basmati, you've got jasmine, you can, you've got uh, uh, all, all different flavors of rice. But I think the, the, the one that you really want to use with the Greek food would be the, uh, the converted. The, uh, you can get the big brand names too, the big bags. So uh, all we're going to do with this now is, uh, we're not making really a pilaf, we're actually going to cook it in the, own, in the stock that the, uh, the lamb is, is being cooked in. So what I've done ahead is now when you're doing this, at home, you're gonna have your lamb come out of the oven, then you're gonna take that stock and you're gonna use that in the rice. You're gonna use some of that in the rice. But what I've done is I've actually reserved some already so we can get right into it so you can see how it's done. But I've got about two cups here of the, uh, the converted white rice. We'll put that right in the pan. And uh, you don't even need any extra fat or anything because all you're gonna do is, you're gonna simmer it like if you were making steamed rice, but you're gonna steam it in the lamb broth. So. With that, I'm going to take about two cups of the uh, two cups of the white rice, and it's going to take about three cups, just a little bit less than three cups of stock. So I'm going to go ahead and put this right in there. And the, the little tomato bits from the uh, from the tomatoes in there, that's perfectly fine. All those. Flavors are all gonna to come together. So now, I've got that there. We still have a little bit of the stock left, which is fine. But we're gonna bring this up to a boil. Uh, and we're gonna let it cook for about five, 10 minutes, and then we're gonna shut it down. We're gonna cover it and shut it down and let it finish by steaming. The same way we do a stovetop pilaf, which I'll do in another episode. But we're just, all we're doing is we're gonna cook that, that white rice right in the stock. And it's, it's very, very simple, because the flavor is really in that stock. It's a simple technique. The flavor is all in the, uh, in, the, in the, the chicken stock, the tomatoes, the, the flavor that's coming off the lamb, that little essence of cinnamon, and that little essence of oregano. So uh, while this is coming up, um, just give it a stir, you know, kind of get the, uh, the stock to go around all the surface area of all the rice kernels, and uh, we'll just bring it up to 10. So we've got it at a nice boil now. I'm going to turn it down. We'll let this simmer for just about probably another five minutes or so, and then we're going to cover it up. But I'm just going to move it around one last time, just so none of it sticks to the bottom. Or anything. Get these nice anodized pans, so that shouldn't really be an issue. But now we're going to let this simmer for probably about five minutes or so, uh, and then we'll put a cover on it and we'll call it a day. We're just going to shut it down and set it aside. Like I said, we'll finish steaming at the end. Uh, we'll get right into the uh, cucumber um, salad, cucumber yogurt salad. I've got here. I've got some English cukes now. 
my it's it's a preference really. And uh, most places will take the skins off the cucumbers uh, because they, that's where they're they're very bitter. They're very um, uh, very tart, and they add a, a different. They take away from some people think that they take away from the actual flavor of the cucumber. They they add a different flavor profile to it. I my theory is. All the nutrients are in the skin, and I, you know, personally, I like this, the flavor of the skin. So, uh, the best way to get the um, the bitterness out is if you just pre-salt the cukes for about 15, 10, 15 minutes, and I would say probably about a half. For this, this is one English cuke here, about a half a teaspoon of salt, and you just toss those cukes around and let them sit in that salt. And what's going to happen is. Uh, if you don't like the bitter, this is the best way to do it. What's going to happen is you're going to end up with the liquid at the bottom of the, of the dish. Then you just strain those cucumbers out. That liquid is all that bitterness. All the bitter juice that comes out of it, that's where all that bitterness lies. So if, if, you, if you really don't like it to be that bitter, that's the best way to do it. Just a little bit of salt, like I said, about a half a teaspoon to one, um, one cucumber. And that will draw out the, the bitter essences in the cube. And then you can just discard that liquid and start the same way. But my thing is, is the... Um, the skin on just about any vegetable is where all the nutrients are. Same thing with apples and pears and fruits and things like that. So um, most of the vitamins are on the outside surface, so that's why I, I usually like to try to keep as much skin on product as I can on uh, vegetables and fruits. So we're going to go ahead and go right into it. You saw me salt the cube. Now we would wait 15 minutes to scrub the water. I personally don't mind if it's got a little bit of extra flavor on it, so I'm going to go ahead and make it even a little more tart with a little bit of cider vinegar. I've got probably about... I would say uh, a little less than a quarter of a cup. I would call it a quarter of a cup. Um, and I've got some fresh chopped mint. And I've, I took liberty and just chopped it up ahead. We'll pop that in there. And then I've got this Greek, Greek yogurt. And you can find this in the yogurt aisle. And I just have one container. And it's a, this is a six ounce container. And it's a, it's a thicker yogurt than a standard, than what you're used to. This is more of like a, like a heavy cream. I get the plain where they have fruity flavored ones and stuff, but just get the plain because you want to you want you want to create the flavors. You don't want to get one that's already pre 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 dressed for you. So I'm going to take that. We'll put that right in on top of the cucumbers, and then we'll also just give that a quick toss and get that yogurt to go all over those cucumbers. And this is a nice this is a nice cooler uh, salad if. Um, if you added any spice to anything, we didn't add any spice, but if you did, this would be a good one to kind of offset it. You find a lot of things like this in Indian food too, to offset a lot of the curries and spices and things like that. So um, so I went ahead, now I've tossed this all together, and I'm just going to throw a pinch of seasoning salt on there, just to kind of bring out the rest of the, those flavors, all those all those flavors that you haven't really seen or noticed, that, that uh, little essence of seasoning salt, the spice mix is going to help to bring that out. So, and that's all there is to it. Now you want to hold this, and the longer this sits in your fridge, the softer those cucumbers will get, and the more those flavors will marry. Our rice is ready to cover. We'll shut it down, put a lid on it, and we're just going to let that rest. So now we'll get into the final stage, which will be the salad. So with the salad, I've taken a, a garden salad. I just put this together ahead. It's a, it's a simple garden salad. I've got romaine, iceberg, tomatoes, cucumbers, onions, carrots, you know, your standard salad stuff. But I've thrown some black Kalamata olives on top. I've thrown some pepperoncinis on top and some, uh, some sliced pepperoncinis and some feta cheese. So it's a standard, oh, and there's also some radishes in there as well. So it's a, it's a basic salad, but I just added those three items, the, uh, the olives, the feta, and the pepperoncinis, just to give it that Greek flair. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add uh, uh, stuff into this bowl here. We're gonna make a vinaigrette. So I have about a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. Now, when you're making a vinaigrette, uh, it depends on how you want it, if you want it emulsified or not. And what emulsified means is whipping it so it, it blends together so it's more creamy. Whereas if you have a separated dressing, which is perfectly fine, that's just a vinegar and oil based dressing with all the flavors in it and it gets tossed into the salad. I like the both, it doesn't matter however you want to do it. But one thing you got to remember when you're making a homemade dressing is um, the, the dressing yield ratio is um, one part vinegar to three parts oil. So. Uh, so I've got the one part, which would be a quarter of a cup of the red wine vinegar in here. So that means we're going to add three quarters of a cup of olive oil when we get to that stage. So I've got a little bit of lemon juice here too. I have about two tablespoons of lemon juice. We'll add that right in there with the red wine vinegar. I've got about a teaspoon of garlic, fresh minced garlic. Throw that right in there. I've got a nice heavy teaspoon of spicy brown mustard. Throw that right in there. We'll 
throw about two teaspoons of fresh oregano. And let's go ahead and mix that up and see where that, where that takes us. Okay, and now, now this is the point where uh, we talked a little bit about emulsification. Now's the point where you put a, either a, a burr mixer, which is that handheld blender that you stick in there and, and whip it up that way, or you can put it in a food processor, and then you slowly add the oil until it gets nice and creamy. But we're just gonna do a nice separated dressing, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that three quarters of a cup of olive oil right into that. And this one doesn't have to be emulsified. And then the last thing you wanna do is you wanna taste the dressing we're going to add our edge to it. Mm. Mm. I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of edge or salt, pepper, and garlic. And that's all there is to it. Now, what you can do also is you can also add uh, some diced olives to it, some feta to it, some fresh, other fresh herbs, maybe some mint, some dried basil, whatever you like. But this is just a basic uh, Greek vinaigrette, you know, a scratched Greek vinaigrette. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and pour this right over the salad, and then we're going to give it a quick toss, and we'll be good to go. So what we've done is after the uh, salad was mixed with the dressing, we tasted the salad, we determined that it needed just a little bit more seasoning. So I went ahead and I added a little bit more of the edge that I have, or you could add a little salt, pepper, garlic, just to kind of bring out those final flavors in that salad to call it a perfect salad. So we're ready to start dishing up here, so let's uh, let's get right to it. I'm going to put this. Nice salad and a chilled bowl off the side. Oh, look at all that love in there. Holy smokes. Get some nice crumbled feta cheese. Make sure we get some radishes in there too. It's already pre-dressed. And this will be nice too as it sits, say about 15 minutes. The vinegars will start to break everything down and all those flavors will come together. So we have our salad. Then we have our rice, which is again, just standard white rice cooked in that lamb stock that we made. And I like to use a scoop not only because it's nice on the presentation but it's a it's a four ounce scoop and it gives you a good portion control too so if you have um if you have a company you need to know how many portions you're going to have or if you're you know following a strict diet regimen or whatever you're only allowed to have so much you know starchy uh, substances like you know uh, carbs or whatever so it's, a, it's just a handy tool to have because not only is it a nice presentation but you're only eating what you're supposed to eat. so uh, and then we're going to go ahead and we'll take the lamb and as you can see i took the shank right out of the Brine and look at this, it's just gonna fall right apart. And we'll go ahead and break this up. Look at that, it looks like pork works, like I said. So we'll put some of this right on there. Oh yeah, baby. And then what I've done is I took a little bit of that sauce. Now you can always thicken this up with a little cornstarch too and make a gravy out of it, but I took some of the some of the um, the stock right out of that, that kettle that it was cooking in. Just to uh, just to kind of give it a little uh, moisture. And then we'll add some of the cucumbers. Nice cucumber salad. Put some of that right on there. And the last thing I'm going to add is the uh, convenience store-bought spanakopita, which is not a not a big deal. You can go ahead and do that. And what these are, these are little spinach puff pastries. And that is your Spartan dinner. So we chose for today's episode the uh, Irony 2007 Cabernet Sauvignon because uh, we found that it was a very, very fruity, very fruity, um, nice red wine to go with this and it actually helped to bring out some, offset some of the bitterness and it also brought a, a nice flavor out of the lamb, compliments the lamb really nice because it's so sweet. So, um, so that was why we chose this one. It's a 2007 Cabernet Sauvignon by Irony and uh, it is absolutely fantastic. So I want to thank you for joining me in my magic, madness, and mayhem. We will see you next time. Oh, yes. Oh, that is so smooth. Fantastic.